Jason Huntley, who you guys just brought in, has a pretty dynamic uh, highlight reel of, as a kickoff returner. I was just wondering, is he a guy that you you can just kind of plug and play in there and, and kind of just watch him take off? Yeah, um, no, we're definitely excited about getting him in the building. Obviously, uh, we've seen all of his film. We talked about him through the draft process, all that. Um, so we're excited about Jason, um, whether or not you just plug and play. I mean, I, I can't really answer that. Um, but we're excited to get him out on the practice field and see what he does for us um, in person. So Paul Donowich and then John McMullen. Hey, Dave. Uh, Howie Roseman was talking about the special teams the other day, and he, he, he referred to it as one of the big unknowns uh, going into the season because of the lack of live drills. Uh, how unknown is it right now, and, and, and how much better do you hope this special teams will be this year than last year? Yeah, no. Um, well, I would say this. I mean, we've done a lot of live drills. Uh, we haven't tackled anybody to the ground on a kickoff or a punt, but um, we have set up a lot of live scenarios. Uh, we feel good about the group that we got. I'm really excited about these guys. These guys have been working really hard, training hard, preparing hard. Um, but I would say going into any game, yeah, sure, there's some unknowns. I think it's probably the same on offense and defense. Um, but we're definitely excited about the group, and uh, I'm excited to get this game going. It is definitely different not having the preseason games, um, but at the end of the day, none of us have it. So we're excited for the opportunity that lies ahead for us. John McMullen and then Zach Berman. Hey, good morning, Dave. Uh, wanted to talk to you. Obviously, you're probably pretty excited that guys like Rudy Ford, Craig James made the final 53. Uh, <laughs> What is your uh, sort of the coach's uh, process in that roster cut down? Do you like pound the table for guys like that? How, can you kind of take us behind the scenes with that? Yeah, no, I would say one great thing about this organization is uh, we got great leadership and Howie and Coach Peterson and those guys. And we do have a lot of collaboration. So um, and I think for myself, I obviously appreciate that. Um, I think we have a voice. Uh, obviously, we don't, or as a coach, or for myself individually, I definitely don't don't make the cuts and the final decisions. Um, but uh, we definitely have a voice. Obviously, I think you know some of these guys uh, are maybe play better on special teams than they have on offense or defense. You know, maybe the back end of the roster, some of those guys, you know, maybe have more of a special teams role. Um, and then obviously the front of the roster is the opposite of that. You know, the higher up the guy is, the less special teams role he has, the more, you know, his value in offense and defense probably plays into those things. But at the end of the day, for me, I, I can voice my opinion and say, you know, how, how I think, you know, this any particular player is or how good he is. And then ultimately those guys have the tough decisions to make. Zach Berman and then Dave Zangaro. Hey, Dave, as, as a follow-up to that, last year you were saying how how you had to kind of convince Malcolm Jenkins to take fewer special team snaps in practice. Um, Rodney McLeod is a veteran who's who's played quite a bit of special teams for you. Is, is that a conversation you have had to have or are planning to have with Rodney and you still view him as having a special teams role? Yeah, um, obviously before our first game, I'm not going to share all that with you. Um, we'll let some of that be a surprise for you and for Washington. But uh, no, Rodney does a great job, just like Malcolm. Uh, both those guys were safeties on our kickoff team for a lot of years. Um, so we'll see what ends up happening on Sunday. But uh, Rodney's definitely a valuable piece for us, both on defense and special teams. And he's a great leader for us. I mean, he's a guy who came up as a special teams player. He was an undrafted free agent in this league. He ended up playing special teams, made a four-core contribution early in his career, and then ended up becoming a starter on defense and then became a free agent and wound up here. Um, so he's just a great story. I mean, he helps out all those younger players. He talks to those guys about where they are and how he made it and shares his you know, story. And so he's been a great help for us on special teams. So no matter how much he plays, he's still really beneficial for us. Dave Zangaro and then Bo Wolf. Hey, Dave, who are one or two young players that have kind of impressed you that you think can really make an impact for your teams this year? 
Golly, we've got a bunch of them. Uh, I, I will say this, I mean, I, and I'm not trying to dodge the question, but we really have a bunch of good young players. I was excited about the draft class. Obviously, the two young linebackers have done a nice job for us. Kayvon Wallace has done a really nice job for us. All those wideouts, Jalen Rager has done a nice job for us. I mean, we've gotten a lot of... Uh, we've gotten a lot out of all those guys, and I think all those guys will play a big role for us. The other thing I would say is we got a bunch of guys stacked on our practice squad, and I'm not going to go into any of those individual names, um, but a bunch of those guys we're really excited about, and this year a bunch of those guys are going to end up playing a role for us also. So we're excited about the group we got to work with. Bo Wolf and then Martin Frank. Hey, Dave, I don't know if you uh, pay attention to this at all or this was on your radar, but uh, Football Outsiders last year had uh, Jake Elliott as like the best kickoff kicker in the league, but the, the coverage unit itself was was pretty below average. Is that how you viewed things last year? And uh, how do you how do you make the coverage unit better? Yeah, I, I have no idea, to be honest with you. All I can tell you is I've been told, I don't look at football outsiders. I have been told before certain statistics, uh, statistics about individual players. And I would say, um, I'm sure there's a lot of good information in there, but I would say that uh, there's, I think there's a lot of bad information out there, quite frankly. Um, yeah. I mean, they don't know what, what the goal or the intent of any one particular kick is. They don't know the goal of what the coverage is. They don't know the situation of the game. A lot of those statistics don't account for the situations in the game. Um, and again, I'm not trying to knock the source. I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of valuable information in there. We do look at a lot of statistics and study a lot of different things. Um, but like there's some of those rankings that they, they don't even tell you the formulas that they're using or how they come up with them. Uh, so we don't put a whole lot into that. So I couldn't really tell you exactly what they're looking at. Um, we, I can tell you I like Jake Elliott a lot. I'm excited about him. And I can tell you I like this coverage group. And we're excited to watch these guys go out and play on Sunday. Martin Frank and then Rob Motti. Hey, Dave, uh, you mentioned a little bit uh, Jalen Rager a little earlier. Um, you know, it seems like you guys are, are pretty high on him as far as, um, you know, a special teams player maybe as a returner or something like that. And obviously you're trying to replace a guy like Darren Sproles as a punt returner. Just if you can describe like how Jalen has done so far um, and, and if he can't play Sunday, how that might affect your plans. You know, with, you can tell yeah, uh, no, Jalen's done a great job for us. Uh, we're really excited about him. I know the last time I was with you guys, I spoke about how explosive he is with the ball in his hands and all that stuff, his college film and, and uh, his track record or what he's done um, in his career so far. So we're obviously really excited about him. You know, whether or not he plays or not, obviously we'll find out on Sunday. Um, but I would say at the end of the day, all of us always have to have a bunch of contingency plans probably this year more than ever. Um, if he didn't end up playing, then at the end of the day, it'd be the same thing as if he went down in the middle of the game. Um, so we got plans in place, whether he's out there or not. Um, and again, we're, we're really excited about the group we got. And we're excited to go against this Washington team. This is a good football team. Uh, these guys got a talented crew back there. They got a really good returner. Uh, they're punter, kicker, snappers, veteran group that's been together for a long time. Um, so we're looking forward to matching up with them. Rob Motti and then Jimmy Kemsky. Dave, how challenging is it when you have a lot of moving parts with injuries and now with the uncertainty with COVID? How many guys do you have to prepare to be returning the ball on both punting and kick returns. Yeah, you got to you definitely got to have a bunch of plans in place or definitely have a bunch of options if this guy can go if this guy can't if you know he's down before the game is a little bit different than if he's down during the game just cuz you can have a chance to bring somebody else up. There you got the new practice squad rules where you're you're able to bring two guys up from the practice squad each week without exposing them to the waiver wire at the end of the game. So you really got two extra spots uh, to pick from. Um, you have the extra active player. We went from 46 to 47. And then you also have the extra offensive lineman. So it's really 48 on game day. Um, and uh, so there's a, there's a lot of different variables. I'd say at the end of the day, our job's always been to have a lot of contingency plans in place. Throughout my time here, we've used a handful of different snappers. Um, we've had different kickers. 
um, in the middle of a game. We've had that stuff pop up. Uh, we've had different kickers week to week um, due to injury. Um, so you're always contingency planning. Um, but I would say to answer your question is probably even a little bit more than it's been in the past. I mean, you're repping your second, third groups a little bit more, especially early in the year, because there's a strong feeling that at some point those guys are going to play. Um, and then to go back to the practice squad situation, we got 17 guys. We have 17. We got the extra international player. Everyone else got 16. But we got some extra bodies there. And at the end of the day, you're really getting those guys ready to play, too, because at some point, just like every year, those guys are going to end up coming up and contributing for us. So, yeah, you're always trying to develop players, um, and you're also always trying to be as good as you can be on any given week, and then also making sure that you're developing those guys for the future. We have time for two more, so we'll go Jimmy Kemsky and then Paul Domowicz. Hey, Dave, uh, who will the starting kick and punt returners be on week one? Yeah, uh, I would say nice try on that, uh, but I admire the effort. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll find out Sunday. <laughs> Last one here from Paul Domowicz. Well, Jimmy stole my question, Dave, but uh, uh, let me just ask you about your punt return situation. Last year, you averaged probably less than you have since you got here in 2013. I know you're excited about this bunch. Uh, how much better do you feel it needs to be this year? Yeah, I mean, I, I would never put any predictions. I would say at the end of the day for us, the biggest thing is winning the football game. Um, and there's a lot of different situations that come into play. I mean, you could try to just get yards and return yards and all that stuff. It depends. Like, I mean, sometimes sometimes return average is down, but guys are feeling the ball more than other players. Um, sometimes, uh, sometimes the situation in the game, you're playing with a lead more than you're playing from behind. And that really dictates what you're doing or how aggressive you're trying to be in the return game. So I would say there's just a lot of different variables to that. I mean, how often is it fourth and two or fourth and one or fourth and three versus fourth and 16? I think if you looked at like averages in different situations like that, you'd find two totally different uh, numbers. Um, and, and that's to go back to like some of the questions on some of those statistic websites. I don't think a lot of those things uh, put all that stuff into play. And, and some of them, they don't tell you the formula, so you don't know what they do put into play. Um, like I said, I've never paid a lot of attention to any of that. I do track where we're at. Bottom line is um, we always want to be better than we've been. I, I would say that every year. Um, and uh, we're looking forward to this season and trying to become the best football team we're going to be. I know there's going to be some ups and downs along the way. That's how this thing works in the National Football League. Um, at the end of the day, for us, we got to continue to work to get just a little bit better every week. And that's where all our focus will be in preparation and work and trying to become a little bit better every day.